to work with your mentors and you be able to turn in your second draft of your financial plan. So I'm gonna call you guys up by team. Um, and if one of you has items, you can go ahead and bring them on up and I'll check them off. So we'll have team one. That's Blake, Nicole, John, Alex. No. Are any of them in here? No. Okay. Team two, Haley, Travis, Mason. Nope. None are here. Oh, awesome. Did you guys have anything today? Um, we don't have anything else. Okay, so you just did your one financial plan and you're good. Awesome. Um, team three, Jessica, Devon, Jacob. Here, we have various bits of the financial plan and the business plan, but it's not what we're going to do. Okay, it's do you have really something we can look at? It's part of the business plan. Yeah. We're just looking for what you're doing so far, so it doesn't have to be complete. No, so, Team four, Clay, Sarah, Matthew. All right, awesome. Um, and then Mary, and team five, Mari, Alyssa, Christine, do you guys Alyssa have? has it. Alyssa has it? Okay. Um, team six, Tanea, Elena, Emily. Elena has our financial. Okay. They'll be really helpful as you guys are there. Um, they can't, most of them probably can't be here today. So what you should be doing is meeting with them during your team times, if you can. Um, you can ask me afterwards if you have any questions. John and Nova Myla. Yeah. Okay. I guess that brings me to a good point. Um, how many of you guys met with your mentors last week?
on what's going on. And just to clarify the importance of that really quick, Riley, uh, if you have missed any of the sessions and have not made them up, you are only allowed two unexcused absences in the whole program. So if you don't get your makeup worksheets in by next Tuesday, you're going to be disqualified for prizes. You can still be eligible for scholarships, but not the prizes. So make sure that if you've missed sessions, you do that before next week. We, okay. don't, we don't want to punish you guys either. It'll help you and your teammates, you know. You, we want you to pull equal weight, so. It's really be important. Be informed, have fun. The worksheets aren't horrible at all either, so don't be too intimidated. And that brings me to our last point. We have a great speaker here today. It's his third year with Yeah. So, he's really excited to help you guys get your business plan started. Um, today we'll be talking about product design and industry analysis. So this is Steve Noter Donato from General Motors. Let's welcome. Hi, folks. Like I said, I'm uh, I'm here to talk to you about product design, product development, and a little bit about competitive analysis. Um, my name's Steve Steve Noter Donato. I've been with the uh, General Motors facility here in town for the past four years. I'm the plant manager over there, but I've been with GM for 27. So I have a little bit of an idea of how product development works, at least in the auto industry. And I'm going to draw from some of that experience when we talk today and actually show a little bit of video. Um, one of the things I'd like to do, because I don't want this to be all me talking the whole time, I'd like to just uh, hear who you are, what year you are, something about you that I would not otherwise have known but real quick. For example, I'm Steve Morgan, I'm a fourth year at Marion, I'll call myself a senior. This is my fourth year. I like to climb mountains, is what I do in, in my spare time when I can once a year, at least out west. I'm going to let you think for a second, okay, so we're going to show you a quick video while you're thinking, just to give you a little idea about General Motors. Movement has always been essential to humanity's progress. Travel allows us to discover new cultures and new ideas. It connects us to one another. We make what moves people. And we're moving in the right direction. With a new management team, a new balance sheet, and a new business model focused on our vision to design, build, and sell the world's best cars, trucks, and crossovers. We're a company of diverse brands, selling over 7.5 million vehicles in over 120 countries worldwide. Strong in emerging markets like Brazil, India, Russia, in China, but we're already number one. With sales in North America growing, and cars like the electric-powered Chevrolet Volt now on the ground, we're taking the automobile to places it's never been. So in the future, no matter where people want to go, we'll be well positioned to get them there. We're the new General Motors. Okay, so that's what General Motors is all about today. Uh, everybody should know by now we came out of bankruptcy a few years ago and hopefully uh, you've seen some of our finer products on the road today and hopefully you're as excited about them as I am. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to talk about you, product development. So real quick, around the room. Name, year, something I wouldn't know. Real quick. Uh, Noah Todd, junior, and I play guitar. Play guitar, great. Thanks, Noah. I'm Myla Townsend, I'm a junior, and I love show choir. Excellent. Count too. Oh, <laughs> I'm Grant Yoder. I'm a senior at Indiana Wesleyan, and I play the drums. Drums, excellent. Thank you. I'm Amy Campbell. I'm a junior at Mississippi, and I paint. Excellent. Thank you. Travis Rich, junior at Cinema. Like Halloween. I'm sorry. Like Halloween. Excellent. Speak up, folks. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Everybody wants to hear.
You're amazing. All right, there you go. Some self confidence. I like that. Uh, my name is Jamari. I'm a junior at Marion High School, and I like to see you. Hello, everyone. I'm Jacob Lillard. I'm a senior, and I previously just got a book, which got published. Hmm. Interesting. Hope that works out for you. Uh, I'm Jacob Lillard. I'm a senior at Cinema High School, and I play bass guitar. Barker, I'm a senior at Mrs. Cinewall, and I like being part of the school band. Excellent. Mentor Scout. I'm a junior at Yale Center, and I like trail running. Trail running, cool. I'm Sarah Highwell, I'm a senior at Marion, and I like to eat a lot and try different foods. That's good. <laughs> you need experimental, cool. Irish. Uh, I'm Noah Graham, I'm a junior at Marion. Uh, I play football. Excellent. I'm Brina Bartram. I'm a junior at Marion High School and I like to play keyboard. I'm Maddie Lester. I'm a senior at Marion and I attend a military camp during the summer. I'm Ashley Bell. I'm a senior at Marion and um, I want to be a captain. Okay. I'm Lane Vermillion. I'm a junior at Marion and I spend my free time designing theoretical molecules. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> In your spare time. Let's get right to you. I'm Mason Stanley. I'm a junior at Mrs. Cinewall, and I have two different colored IDs. Um, I'm Tanea Barnes. I'm a senior at Marion, and I like to draw. I like to draw. Okay. Um, my name's Anna. I'm a junior at uh, Indiana Wesleyan University, and I had apple pie for the first time last month. The first time last month. Yes, nice. All right, good deal. My favorite time. Did you time. like it? Yes. <laughs> it so good. Last but not least. I'm a kid from my whole family. I'm a junior. I'm a senior. And I play softball. Play softball. Did I miss anybody? Excellent. I'm telling you folks, knowing people around you is probably the biggest part of being in business. Knowing people, knowing what makes them tick, uh, what makes them think, what motivates them. I did that lesson for a reason. No matter what you do, unless you understand people and work through people, you're not going to be successful. So that's the first thing you should do when you put yourself in a new environment is get to know your get to know your audience. So today we're going to talk about product development. Product development is all about a few different things, but it starts with an idea, a design. And it's about designing, manufacturing, distributing, getting the product out there, and then ultimately selling it. Okay, getting it out to people who are going to pay money for it and hopefully make you rich. At least that's the idea, right? If you look at design, manufacture, and distribute and sell, it kind of matches up with, with General Motors' idea of their vision. They came up with a new vision a while back to design, build, and sell the world's best vehicles. They want everybody in the company to be focused on one of those three things. And if you think about it, that is the design, build, and sell process. That's the manufacturing, product development process in, in a nutshell right there. Um, I've got a quick video I want to show you within GM. You know what? In the interest of time, we're going to skip that. We're not going to like that. We'll skip that. Let's go back. Let's go back to this presentation. Let's do it this way. But it's about designing, building, selling the world's best people. Everything can be boiled down to those three aspects. Somebody read this for me. Somebody please volunteer and read this. In the back. The ultimate success of a business is dependent on finding what customers want and what customers need, and then developing a Does that make sense? There's three, there's three key things in there that you need to understand. Okay, because I'll tell you what, anybody in this room can have a business, but it may not be a successful business. To have a successful business, you need to discover a need. You need to meet that need with a product or a service. And then lastly, you need to do it at a cost that will make you profit. Okay, think of a, a stool with three legs. Each of those are one of the legs on that stool for a successful business. If any one of those are missing, Week, that stool is going to fall over. You can have a phenomenal product. You might be able to make it at a profit, but if there's no need for it, are you going to be in business? No. Okay. Take take it another way. You've uh, you found a great need. Okay. You you made this incredible product, but every one you sell, you lose a dollar. Are you going to be in business long? Absolutely not. 
and you can do it the same way on, on each of those legs. So when you when you look at it, make sure that your product is fulfilling a need and that you can save it, save money or, or make money. And there's always ways you can save money in your process. The real first two are important, a need and a good product. You'll find ways over time to save money. The, the Japanese and the manufacturing have boiled down uh, forms of waste to seven distinct forms of waste. We're not going to get into too much detail on that. But there's ways to cut costs in your, in your process, whether it's a service or whether it's a good later on. But you at least have to meet the need and the product and work on the cost later. So the product development process starts with an idea. Eventually, you have to kind of refine that idea into a design. Okay, move that into a, the build stage, eventually develop it, test it, refine it, and then ultimately come out and release it and sell it to the world. So it's a, a path from initial concept to finished product. The goal, obviously, is to have something high quality. You have to be efficient at it, otherwise you're not going to make money. But you need to know that during the course of doing this, things change over time. Let's break it down again. So an idea. Have an idea, but get your feedback from the world around you. There's a lot of opportunities out there. You need to, to pick the best one. There's more than one way to skin a cat, but you got to find the best way to skin that cat. Get feedback from people that are going to be your ultimate consumers or customers. Get feedback from friends, family, relatives. But ultimately, you got to figure out whether that idea is, is going to be successful. Then start playing with it. Okay, start designing it. You got to test your idea. To make sure it's appealing to people. And when you're designing it, you got to make sure that you can build it. If it's a product, you have to make sure you can. Assemble it. A lot of ideas are great. A lot of designs for cars are phenomenal. When it comes down to uh, stamping sheet metal or putting them together in the factory, they're very difficult, and the cost shoots up, and then you lose money. So you got to think about that in the early, early part of the program, and then ultimately start making a prototype. You know, an early, an early mock-up, an early sample of what the finished product's going to look like, and that's when you really start to be able to refine it, and then you start developing it, okay, and you start. Uh, training people on how to build it or how to provide a service that you're hopefully going to put out there in the world. And then you test it, make sure the quality is high, and you fix it. Sometimes you have to go back above and redo some things based on your findings in each of these steps. And then lastly, you launch it. Okay? You're done, you release it, it's out in the world. From a, an auto analogy, you look at the Chevy Volt. When the Chevy Volt first came up in concept, it looked like this. Okay? This is a number of years ago. Pretty cool, pretty sleek, pretty futuristic looking. But over the course of refining and developing it and testing it, the model had to change to fit reality. When it came out, it looked like this. And you need to be prepared when you're going through your design phase and your testing phase that your original idea may change over time. And that's OK. okay? It might take a couple of different turns that you didn't expect, but things change over time. Or they might not. If you look at the Chevy Camaro, Remember the, the Transformer movie way back when? When the Chevy Camaro first came out, the concept, and when it first came out in production, it was almost identical. That was the concept car on the top, and the production model beneath it was almost identical. So sometimes your idea morphs over time, and sometimes you're, you're fortunate enough where it stays right on track. Making it a, a little more modern, the new Corvette Stingray, that was the concept car when it first came out. That was the idea we wanted to uh, follow. When the final model came out, it was a little different, still pretty awesome looking, but, but a little different. But again, just be prepared as you're going through your, your product development that your idea may change, it may morph, but that's okay. In GM, I want to give an example of what we call the GVDP, and that's the Global Vehicle Development Process. A lot of, a lot of words, but... Uh,
Everything starts and ends with great products. This much you've heard before. But what about the process that creates great products? How does that work? Where does it start? When does it end? These aren't questions the customer asks. To them, it's all about whether or not their new vehicle works. The answers to these questions make up the process that puts a new vehicle in the hands of a customer. This process is the bricks and mortar of General Motors. It's called the Global Vehicle Development Process, or the GVDP for short. This process can be separated into five key areas. Planning, design develop, test validation, tool and build. What you're looking at is the main concept. Regardless of vehicle, regardless of market, regardless of continent, every vehicle that GM develops goes through this process. It used to be that each region had its own vehicle development process. In fact, in Michigan, there were several vehicle development processes covering the various engineering centers. In calendar year 2000, we changed all that by developing a global vehicle development process. The first step in bringing a new product to market is planning. Much like we wouldn't consider building a house without a blueprint, we wouldn't consider building a new vehicle without a plan. This planning process includes projections for future opportunities, branding, competitive benchmarking, powertrain options, consisting of an engine and a transmission, and customer research. We consider our customers' needs, while also considering what role the vehicle will play in their life. Lastly, we consider their responses to interior and exterior design proposals and whether or not the vehicle creates an emotional response. With this information, we then construct a program profile, an overview of the vehicle, branding identity, specifications, capabilities, competitive landscape, and its reason for being. Next, we shift to the design development stage. This is both a challenging and exciting step in the process. It's here where the vehicle starts to take shape. First, we consider the inputs, customer needs and wants, government regulations and business case for the vehicle. Next, we identify the architecture of the vehicle. This is the set of common parts, the framework, if you will, that not only enables us to develop this vehicle as designed, but we can also use it for other vehicles around the world. By using common parts, we can reduce purchasing costs, engineering costs, and produce higher quality vehicles. The parts we choose in this stage ultimately define the fundamental performance of the vehicle. After we've determined the architecture and all associated parts, components, we move to 3D modeling. It's here where we see the first rendition of what the proposed vehicle might look like. We digitally design the vehicle from the ground up, determining vehicle layout, dimensions, and proportions for both interior and exterior offerings. After this virtual model has been approved and receives the sign-off from senior leadership, the first of several physical, progressive vehicle builds takes place. This takes us to the testing validation stage. There are three stages of physical and virtual vehicle builds. The mule, the integration vehicle, or IV, and the product process validation, or PPV vehicle. These build and validation cycles assess engineering performance, virtual and physical integration and assembly. All three of these processes are vital to a successful launch and life cycle of a vehicle. While all of this is going on, the men and women over at Manufacturing Engineering are doing their part to prepare for the start of regular production, or SORP. This represents the tooling stage. They manufacture the necessary equipment to assemble the vehicles from thousands of parts to one drivable, fully functional vehicle ready for the customer. After these phases are complete, we enter the final build, the Manufacturing Validation Build. This is the last stop before the end of the line or start of regular production. At this stage, we're looking at the final product, the vehicle that a customer can expect to receive. This is the build stage, where metal meets metal, where sparks fly, where thousands of vehicles are built by the partnership between man and machine. Each worker on the assembly line has responsibility to follow their standardized work. They are specialized to do their job effectively and efficiently. Together, they build GM's family of vehicles, one step at a time. The end result is what the customer buys, a quality-built vehicle that they will rely on for years to come. Everything before this point is out of sight, out of mind. A customer only cares about the end result. It's our job to make sure that we get there with high quality, on time to meet their needs. And that's the basic overview of our global vehicle development process. 
Now that you have a better idea of how the GBDP is structured, we'll soon take a closer look at how a vehicle goes from idea to assembly line. Let's also remember that everything we do comes back to the customer. Without them, we don't have jobs. In the end, what we do in every step of the process affects them, which affects us. The main idea is this. We all have a role to play in the GBDP. Whether you're in finance, engineering, marketing, or you're out there on the assembly line, we all contribute to creating the world's best cars, trucks, and crossover vehicles. Okay, so pretty, pretty technical in nature, but if you think about it, it broke down everything I talked about from the idea, to the design, to the build, to the develop and the release. It kind of broke it down for a, a global car manufacturer. It's the same concepts that you work at, whether you're making a, a, a service, whether you're, you're having a bakery or selling muffins, it's the same kind of idea. You gotta break it down into those steps to be successful. And that's the, that's the point I want to get across. And plus to give you an overview of just, uh, just what it's about in, a, in the auto manufacturing process. Any questions on that? Anything that you saw in there that didn't make sense that you want to question? By the way, feel free, anything that comes up that you're uh, not, not understanding, please, please ask. There's no amount of research that's too far-fetched when you're doing your design and development portion of your, of your uh, project. Do a lot of research. That's where you want to make your mistakes early on because it gets harder and harder to fix your mistakes later on. There's an example here when GM was making the, the Chevy Malibu, they actually studied human physiology. They, they looked at people's butts. They scanned people's butts to make sure that they had an accurate and comfortable seat different demographic regions, whether they sold the vehicle in China, whether they sold the vehicle in the United States. That's pretty extensive research to go through in order to, to get a product out to the customer. But if somebody in a certain area sat in the vehicle and didn't find it comfortable, it's not going to sell. You need to get that creative when you're thinking about your, your product. We talked a little bit about General Motors, or you saw different parts of the process in the, in the uh, video there. GM manufacturing is broken down. I just want to give you understanding in case somebody's questioning it into three main areas you've got stamping you've got powertrain you've got assembly stamping is what we do here in Marion it's on the plant manager of the stamping plant in town and we provide uh, hoods fenders floor pans all kinds of sheet metal that we stamp out and uh, we ship those to an assembly plant the assembly plants where it all comes together okay, that's where the vehicle gets built powertrain is what provides engines and transmissions anybody know anybody that works over at the plant relatives friends anybody been in the plant before on a tour once or twice. Okay, we had an open house a couple years ago. Folks may have had a chance to walk through. And it looks a lot like what you saw in that video. Okay, it's a pretty pretty loud place, but pretty exciting. And uh, again, you see the end product going out the door, which is always pretty exciting. Not as exciting as it is in an assembly plant. You see a shiny vehicle that's all painted. But uh, that's, that's what we do here in town is we make the sheet metal. Competitive analysis. Studying your competition. First thing you need to know is, you know, we talk about the industry. What, what is an industry? Okay, what is an industry? It's a group of businesses that do things similarly. Okay, they compete. You've got a, my, my industry is the auto, automobile industry. Okay, you've got Ford, you've got Chrysler, you've got General Motors, you've got Toyota. There's other industries. There's a athletic shoe industries. I bet you went around the room here, we represent probably about six different brands of athletic shoes or, or other types of shoes that people wear. It's an industry. Within an industry, there's groups called markets. Okay. And more specifically, there's target markets and consumer markets. People that ultimately buy the product that you're selling. You need to know your customer, and that's what this portion is about. You've got different market segments, okay, within each area. And they're broken down on, on different categories, if you will. There's demographics such as age, gender, income. If you're broken down by a region, okay, whether you live in an area that has mountains or valleys or climate or city size or psychographics, that determine what your lifestyles or your interests are. These all come into play when you think about what it is you're trying to sell to people, whether there is a need for that product that we talked about earlier. Your business, your responsibility is to find that niche, that certain segment of the market that's going to want your product. And your niche needs to supply that need that differentiates it from everybody else's. Okay? Not every idea is original. Okay? There's maybe a lot of similar type of competitors out there, but you've got to find something that gives you a little bit of an advantage, something slightly different that makes you stand out in front of everybody else, that people want to pay money or a premium for your product. The Chevy Sonic. Has anybody seen the Chevy Sonic before? 
Okay, it's been out there for a couple years now. Um, when they first came out with it, they were trying to define the market segment. And there was this one little short clip, it's kind of like an ad clip, that I want to play for you. You, you tell me what the, uh, the target market is that they're going for. Yeah. 
they're basically just saying, yeah, we need that. I need to take talk to either my boyfriend's dad who has a business that is with larger construction things and like the, the building that it's at. They like that idea that half of it is like where they actually get the clients. It's like very nice and cozy, but the other half is like a warehouse. They basically want me to do that and then to go to Lowe's. And I talked to my dad about like the prices, like you said, the four things and then find prices. But my dad basically said the problem with that is what quality things you want. Like not everything can be marble and all expensive. But then you have that end where you have like, things can't just be cardboard. Like, you know, like where I asked them what in the middle you want to have the higher quality products in the middle. But they never really decided.
because you know sometimes people can't trust people online, and oh. so and also is um, our geek squad and all that because sometimes people have their own person that they like, like for geek squad. But sure. we just want to make you know I mean art trying to show that we're better than geek squad. Sure. So, yeah. Excellent. Yes. And um, one more weakness that I mentioned is some of the bigger companies. They already have it in their budget to, if competition comes in, they can lower their rates for a little bit because they've been around, they have profit, they can afford to do that, we can. But your, your unique is, uniqueness is the green aspect of it, which yes. is different than the bigger companies, and maybe the word of mouth with uh, friends and family. Good. And also we're hoping to do charitable events too, like the whole cell phone, like you know, if you donate, so donate with the army. Sure, this, sure. So okay. they, they refer to those. Any questions for the group? Go ahead. Okay, my question is, have you figured out a way to, I mean, uh, later, are you still keeping in mind the way of how to wipe everything, like in case they had a virus? A oh, virus? yes, yes. Okay, my next question is, have you figured out a way to also recode things oh, in yes. case somebody decides yes. to go and delete system 32, which yes. is a really big problem? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Good deal. All right, give him a round of applause. There you go, guys. Anybody else want to share? We got room for at least one more. I don't know what they're What was it called? Yeah, what is your business? Okay, I think the questions are on this group now. I didn't even pick you. Go ahead. Come on, guys. Okay. We've noticed lately that there's a bunch of mopeds around here, golf carts. Am I wrong? No. Someone in Marion, mainly in Gas City, is what we're targeting. There's been a lot of moped incidents I've noticed on the streets here and there. I used to own a moped, Honda 1999. Um, never had a problem with it. The target market here was on the mopeds to focus if anybody needed help with their moped or wanted to improve their moped, we would have something to do it with. In that case, we could improve it, repair it, get it back to them. Or if they needed a motor to be rebuilt on a model that they liked. Okay. If your miles are out the wall and you need a new transmission, well, we've got it. Okay, so moped improvement and overhaul. Okay, so what's your, uh, what's your SWAT? Are we asking questions already? Yeah. Let, 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 let's let them go through their SWAT first. Let's ask the questions. Now, what are, what are your strengths as part of a mobile repair? Our strengths are I've already got people that are able to do it okay. throughout the yes. Our We've got, I've got places to do it. Good. We've got our weaknesses, yes. We've got a little bit of competition here and there. I mean, people might do it up at, you know, the little dealership or something. I mean, Honda will do it, probably. Chevy, anything. Another motorcycle business, but we focus mainly on it is what we're trying to do. Okay. Uh, Anything else from the machine that you identified that you put down? I mean, our, other than our opportunities, I mean, we could start remaking our own motors. After that, doesn't get any more detail than remake it, rebuild it, repair it. Okay. All right. Questions? I just questions? wondered if you guys have like a towing, like I'm on the side of the road and a boat head shut down. That would, that would be, yeah. Because they'd be out and I don't know if you're looking at it. Because it's that, 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 I don't know if you're looking at that. Thank you. That actually might help. I got to pick up trucks, you know, just go in the back. <laughs> One more question over here. Okay, well, in Marion, I've already know we have a moped repair shop and moped shop. But if you're only touring gas station, that's a, that's like half of Marion. You're not going to get very much clientele. I mean, what's your what's different between that and the one in Marion that's been here for years? It's not specifically gas city. The thing with gas city is we have the golf club market as well. But Mary, we can just also hit mopeds and it's just a additional business. We really haven't really decided on a location. Yeah, we don't yeah. Know. yeah, we're just 
is now starting up. Okay. All right, give him a round of applause. Buddy. So you can see just by doing that for about 10, 15 minutes, you think of some things. And when you share with other people, they think of some things. And it, it builds and it snowballs. And that's the important uh, lesson to take away is you start early, you brainstorm, get some ideas. And again, it may morph. It get bigger, it may get smaller. But that's, that's the, uh, the benefit of going through an exercise like this. Okay, so look at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I think that's part of your, your take-home assignment is to refine those and, and make sure you have those presented for next week. A couple more things before we wrap up. Know about your industry. Okay, you were talking about the, the, the moped or gas uh, golf cart repair industry. Know about your competition in the area. Know what's important. Is it new? Is it changing? Is it getting bigger? Is it getting smaller? Those are all things you need to consider when you're trying to start your business off the ground. Are there any uh, uh, technology changes that are coming that might impact it? What are the needs? Anticipate the needs. Again, your future, your, your current competition, think about what's going on in the world. And there's a lot of resources that are available to you, especially today. Nobody knows the internet better than you guys. There's all kinds of resources you can pull from and tug from to help you in addition to your, your knowledge of the area. There's a, a website called inspire.indiana.gov. It's, it's a virtual library. It's a, a plethora of knowledge. I encourage you to take a look on there with your idea. They can give you all kinds of uh, data and uh, economic uh, background for your, for your support. First Research is another one. Department of Labor and Work Statistics. Uh, even the Census Bureau, if it comes to demographics that you're looking for. There's a lot of things. Once you get on the internet and start looking for uh, what, what it is you're trying to find out, you, you'll, you'll find it. But these are some uh, major ones that are out there. Before I wrap up, I just wanted to, to let you know, number one, everybody's here because they want to be here, right? No, no one forced you to be here? Raise your hand. You're here because you want to be here? Okay, I hope I, hope I see every hand. But that's a good thing, right? Because uh, it means you're passionate about it. And that's one of the three Ps. You've got to be positive, passionate, and persistent if you're going to be successful, no, no matter what you do, but especially in business. Number one, to be positive, you've got to be excited about your, your product. You've got to be a, a glasses half full type person, not a glasses half empty. But you've got to be passionate about something. No one's going to have more passion than you. But you've got to project that to other people. It's an emotion. People buy an emotion. Okay? They may rationalize later on with, with logic, but they're going to buy an emotion. And your passion is what's going to sell somebody. So no matter what it is, you've got to believe in yourself. So you can't have self-doubt. You've got to be confident. Okay, When it comes time for a rubber hitting the road, you're going to have a lot of obstacles. You're going to overcome a lot of obstacles if you're going to be successful. You can't blame anybody else. You've got to look internal. One of the things that I see is the last one is persistence. A lot of people tend to stop at the first level of resistance that they run into. I see it a lot in, uh, in the workplace. And the folks that are successful, the ones that keep going and going and going. And there are so many examples out there in the world of people that were persistent that did not start out as an instant success. Who here, uh, maybe years ago, in, in, your, in your younger days, read Harry Potter? Anybody read Harry Potter? Somebody read Harry Potter. A few people read Harry Potter. J.K. Rollins, and probably one of the, the most successful authors in, the, in humanity, maybe one of the richest women in the world, richest people in the world. Do you know how many publishers she went to first before someone picked up and published the first Harry, Harry Potter? Well, there was somebody said that. Twelve people said no to her. Twelve people said no, but she kept going and going. Um, Walt Disney. Anybody ever been down to Disney World? Yes. Okay. You folks have been there. Pretty amazing place. Walt Disney. Believe it or not, Walt Disney was fired by his newspaper editor because he lacked imagination. He lacked imagination and he had no good ideas. Okay, probably one of the most important visionaries of, of the entertainment world was told that when he was young. This lady was fired from her job as a television reporter because she was unfit for TV. Oprah. 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 Right? Probably the, the queen of everything on TV. Stephen King, anybody read any Stephen King books? You like Stephen King? He was rejected 30 times when he first published uh, his first book. I think it was Carrie. Um, Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln went into the army as a captain. You know what he came out as? Captain. Not as a colonel, not as a general. He came out as a private. He got he got fucked down to a private. And he ran for a ton of offices before he became the 16th president of the United States. A lot of people. Michael Jordan, all right, arguably, arguably, I'll say arguably, the greatest basketball player, got kicked out of his high school basketball team, for lack of talent. Those people did not stop. Okay, they were persistent. 
So when you put those three P's together, you'll be successful. It may not be the first time, it may not be the tenth time, it may not be the twentieth time, but you will be successful. All right, folks, I wish you, I wish you well, good luck, and uh, look forward to the finals. Hold on, hold on. Thank you guys. really awesome session, and Steve is so, such an awesome person because he wants to be a resource for you guys. Comes back every year, he seems to like you, I guess. I do. <laughs> Just as a reminder, we are so excited to see what you guys have in store for your business plans. It's looking really awesome. I've been hearing some of your ideas, and I'm really excited for you. Just as a reminder, too, we have all of the resources, all of the PowerPoints, all the worksheets that we're handing out in these sessions, and all of the makeup worksheets on our website, grantcounty.com slash EFGC. So anything you need is on that website. And Brad has just got a couple things for you before we head out. So when you guys do your makeup worksheets, if you miss past 10 of past sessions, you're going to get the electronic copy offline, and you're going to submit it via Dropbox. Where are you going to put it? Be a what? Be a what? The cheerleader. The cheerleader said it loud. <laughs> also, you guys are going to submit your guys' product development and industry worksheet. You guys should have all gotten one um, in that little packet I gave you. You can either write it to a hand copy and bring it to the next session um, or submit it via Dropbox. Dropbox. What? Dropbox. You made it to it. Thanks, Clay. <laughs> Um, and make sure that your guys' mentors are helping you with this because we what? Their numbers? I need your mentor and your contact information for that. You can do the other way around too. I'll do that too. Can you guys check your emails for your mentor's contact information if you don't have it? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. One more round of applause for Steve, guys.
Okay. Yep, you're ready. Yeah. Good luck. All right.